Now let's go ahead and jump into the advanced auto mode controls and also the keyboard controls that are available along the bottom. So that way you know what these various different parameters could do for your songs. So the keyboard and advanced controls are used to adjust how auto-tune is snapping the various different notes on your sequences. So you can control in a more advanced way the exact notes that are being snapped inside of your scales, you can control how vibrato is being handled between those notes, or you can even create custom scales or snap everything to a single note to get all sorts of advanced tuning effects or specific use cases that you can use in sound design options. So first let's go ahead and talk about the keyboard. Because this will kind of help this advanced section here along the bottom make a little bit more sense, because most of this has to do with scales and how everything snaps to that scale. Go ahead and go back to the main section here. And then we can go ahead and talk about this keyboard here at the bottom. So the keyboard has three primary different functions. It displays the currently detected pitch in real time with a blue key. It highlights that key in blue and displays the note range, which you can see from here. So that's letting us know the alto tenor range is from this note to this note up here. So if we scroll this up, you can see that that is the range of the auto tune for the alto tenor. And it's letting us know that range there. And then it also allows you to target specific notes. So you can either bypass or remove specific notes from certain scales to get all sorts of custom scale options. Let me go ahead and just put this over to the chromatic scale so you can just see every single note at one time. And by the way, if you want to create more advanced scale options, you want to make sure that you're in chromatic mode. And then from there, you create your own custom scale. So if it's grayed out and you can't adjust anything, that's what's happening there. But as I play this back, I have a new note sequence here. It lets me know all those individual notes by highlighting them blue and showing me which notes are being triggered on my sequence. This is also great because it lets me know the range of my whole section as well. So right now this note's being triggered right here. So I actually want to drop this down. So that way the input type is set to this range here. The cool thing about this keyboard is we could use this to create custom scales. So right now, if I want to go ahead and bypass a singular note from the sequence, let's say for example, that last note, I don't want this to be played or snapped to everything. I can go ahead and select this. It's going to appear orange and the input pitches that are closest to the note will be passed through with no pitch correction. So you might want to use this bypass if a performance only has one or two out of tune notes and you only want to apply correction to those notes that are out of tune. So that way you can maintain the original expressiveness and pitch gestures of the whole track without having to go through and snap each of the individual notes. So this is cool because you can actually just take an entire vocal performance and literally just snap one single note that's out of tune using the auto mode. So it gives you a lot of advanced control that just makes your life a lot easier. So that final note isn't being snapped anymore. Go ahead and just bypass a few of these just for the example. So that range here at the bottom won't be snapped either. Makes these sound a lot more natural and it's only snapping these notes up here along the top. If I want to go ahead and reset all these keys, let's say I had a bunch of these selected, I could go ahead and hit command or control and click and it's going to go ahead and turn all of those off. So it's just kind of a quick way of going through and editing everything if you have a bunch of different options that you've set up and you want to go ahead and configure those. Next we have the remove note, which is the section right here on the bottom, right next to bypass. What this will do is whenever a note is on your keyboard is set to remove, it's going to appear gray and the incoming pitches that are closest to that note will be tuned to the next closest note in the scale instead. So remove is really nice in situations where a singer may be singing a pitch that's so far from the intended note that it actually snaps to the wrong scale note. You could also create all sorts of really weird unusual effects and make everything snap to a single note, for example. We could go ahead and bypass all these notes in this little sequence. And make them all snap to this one note here. And listen to what this sounds like. So it's trying its best to snap them all to this single note right here. It's creating all sorts of really unusual pitch artifacts. So it could be a fun sound design tool as well, where you can use it to kind of adjust a performance. So let's say we wanted to ignore this last note, or maybe even like the C note, for example. So it's trying to tune that up to a B sharp, which you can see right here. And obviously it's a pretty extreme effect. So in this case, it doesn't sound quite as good. I'd recommend turning on format shifting and playing around with that to make the sound a little bit more natural if you're actually going to do this in a production. But that could be just super helpful if you really need to go through and actually dial in a performance. And again, if you have both to be selected and you hit command or control and you click, it's going to go ahead and remove all of them. The next control is going to be this latch control. So whenever this is selected, you have to, by the way, turn this off here and then hit latch. It's basically going to create a momentary switch for bypassing notes. And this allows you to play in various different pitch adjustments with the MIDI controller. So you could send MIDI information to the auto-tune plugin 
using a MIDI track in your DAW, is you can kind of play the pitches in order to uh, remove or bypass them. So for example, hey. so I can kind of go through and momentarily play around with that sequence to create all sorts of really advanced effects. Usually if I'm going through and actually really tuning a vocal and adjusting it this much, I would use the graph mode to get more of a fine tuned control over everything, but it can be nice, especially for creative effects, if you just kind of want to jam along and see what sort of interesting results you can come up with. So now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and play around with our advanced controls. So first, let's go ahead and set this to the proper key. Let's go to C sharp, and we're going to do that C sharp. It's major, I'm pretty sure. Let's go ahead and just check it, make sure it works. Okay, there we go. So now it'll snap to the proper scale. Let's go ahead and talk about this first section, the vibrato section. And by the way, whenever you swap between these two different modes here, it's not going to go ahead and change these controls. It just kind of minimizes them, so then you can play around with these advanced controls along the bottom. So these vibrato controls allow you to add customized synthesized vibrato to your audio. You can think of it like an advanced pitch LFO, where you can actually add vibrato to a given vocal performance. So first you have to decide the shape of your vibrato. You have some basic waves that are commonly found on synthesizers. You have a sine wave, a saw wave, and a square wave. Let's go ahead and just use that sine wave. I'm going to go ahead and turn these all down. We'll cover them here in a moment. Let's crank the pitch all the way up. Let's go ahead and remove these. Let's make this super fast. And then listen to my audio sound. Now you're going to have all this pitch vibrato added in based on this rate, which I have set here. So obviously that's a very extreme effect. You wouldn't want to actually use that much. But if we take this rate down, then we use less of that pitch modulation, just a little bit. Now we can get like a little bit of a pitch vibrato happening on my audio, and it just becomes a lot more interesting. So you could set these shapes to different values. So that's going to give you like a weird arpeggiated effect because of the square wave, or you could use the saw. So usually I use the sine, but it is helpful to know that these other waveforms are available. If you want to control the amount of volume added to your pitch vibrato, you can use the amplitude to adjust this. So this is just adding volume modulation essentially. So this could be used in all sorts of creative vocal effects, or you could even use the format shift. So that in combination with these other values actually makes everything sound a lot more natural. And you kind of create different custom combinations of all three of these to create the style of vibrato you'd like on your audio signal. It is worth noting you don't want to go too wild with the amplitude modulation if you're looking for an actual natural vibrato effect. So you can maybe do a little bit of form shifting, a little bit of pitch modulation, then just a touch of amplitude modulation, and that'll give you a little bit more realistic of a vibrato. Because hey. if it has way too much amplitude modulation, hey. it sounds more like a synthetic effect, but that can be interesting depending on what you're wanting to do. We're going to just crank the pitch all the way up so we can show off the rest of the controls over here. So the first of these is going to be the delay. This will go ahead and insert a delay in milliseconds between the beginning of the note and the onset of the vibrato. So this control is useful for sustained notes like what we have here, where you want the beginning of the note to have no vibrato, and then the vibrato comes in later as they're singing the longer notes. Let's go ahead and play this back. So we'll wait 605 milliseconds before the vibrato comes in. So it has that little bit of delay. And then we have the onset rate, which is the next control here, which sets the amount of time, again, it's a millisecond value, between the start of the vibrato and the full amount of the vibrato. So think of this just like a fade in. So if I turn this up now, my pitch vibrato is going to fade in. Hey. We have this a little longer. Hey. So you can hear as that sound plays back, that vibrato is kind of fading in. So this is really great. Again, just for creating those more natural effects. You can use a little bit of that onset rate, a little bit of delay, and then you can just create a little bit more natural vibrato effects that you're adding into your audio. And the last control here is going to be the variation. And this is used to set the amount of random variation that's applied to the rate and amount parameters. And this is on a per note basis. So every note that's being fed in here, it's going to go ahead and just add a little bit of variation. So this is really great, especially if you're looking for non-synthetic sounding effects. So you want it actually to sound like a real vibrato. Use a little bit of this variation to kind of humanize that sound by adding a little bit of randomness. It'll just make it feel a little bit more natural. Hey. So you can hear whenever we put this all the way up, 
the effect is very drastic, but it's adding in a little bit of pitch modulation and playing around with these different values. But if you have just a little bit of this, it starts to become a lot more natural and actually sound like a proper vibrato. So that's all for the vibrato section. Next, we have the scale section. So that's the second tab on this advanced menu. The scale controls used to create or modify custom scales. So it kind of takes these controls we have along the keyboard, takes them a step further and gives you some really advanced control over exactly how you want to mess around with these different scales. There's also some actually more practical features here that you will be using a little bit more often. So it is worth knowing because there is stuff here that's a little bit more practical. So the first of the controls, you can see that we have each of these individual notes inside of my scale. And right now we are set to D flat major. So this is going to be the first note D flat. I can go ahead and hit bypass. It's going to bypass that note. And it's not just a singular note here. So if we had our keyboard enabled like before and we bypassed the C note, then it would actually just bypass this C note. These other C's wouldn't be bypassed. But in this case, it's going to bypass all D flats inside of my scale. Let's go ahead and just maybe grab a couple of these and bypass them. So that way, as my whole sequence plays back, it's going to go ahead and bypass those notes. So that way those pitches are passed through and they're not tuned. We can go ahead and remove notes by hitting these buttons down here. And then that's going to go ahead and remove those notes from my note sequence. So it's snapping it to the nearest note that is not disabled. And in this case, it's creating a very synthetic effect, but this could be helpful again. If you have one of those notes inside your sequence that's just totally out of pitch, you could use this to kind of snap everything to the proper notes. You can also see the cent values up here along the top. So you can see this is 0 cents, 200 cents, and 400, just giving you a little bit more information about everything. And then we also have the option to hit all, so we can go ahead and bypass all notes, or you can remove all notes at the same time. And we also have the option to ignore vibrato as well. This ignore vibrato function is designed to help to auto-tune identify pitches correctly when a performance includes lots of vibrato. So for example, if a singer is singing a C and has so much vibrato that it starts to lean towards like a C sharp, it'll go ahead and help auto-tune interpret that in the best way possible. Go ahead and, and just turn these off for now. But that can be super helpful if you have a ultra vibrato intensive performance. You can go ahead and play around with this and it'll go ahead and make your performance sound a little bit more natural. Now let's go ahead and go back to the C chromatic scale. And now we're going to get a couple more options here. So now you can see that we have all those notes from the various different scales. Let's turn off ignore vibrato. But the main thing here is we actually have this minor, major, and all settings that are available. So if I go ahead and hit this one, it's going to make all these notes in the major scale. So now it's went ahead and bypasses notes that are not part of that scale. Or we could hit minor, and it's going to go ahead and give us a minor scale based on what we have set to our key. And you can see that that changes based on the scale input that we put over here. This is great because I can create more complicated scales. So I can actually go through and basically add in, maybe I just want this note to be part of the scale. So that way it's not a perfect minor scale. We've now added that note back in, and that enables me to quickly create custom scales that extend across the entire range of my keyboard. So it's not just the individual notes here, it's actually the entirety of the keyboard for the auto-tune. Then to wrap things up, we have these different controls for MIDI on the right-hand side. This just allows MIDI control over the notes in our performance and how notes are being tuned. To use these features, all you have to do is create a MIDI track in your DAW and then just send the information from that MIDI track to the plugin. And there's various different ways of doing this depending on how your DAW is set up. But the first one here is going to be two MIDI. That sets notes to be controlled by MIDI input that you're sending to the autotune. So go ahead and enable that if you want to send MIDI information to the autotune to decide which notes are snapping where. You have the option to learn scale, which creates a custom scale from the MIDI input. And then you have all octaves, which decides if a MIDI input signal controls all octaves or just a specific note that you're playing in. These are a little bit more specific use case. I don't find myself using the MIDI functions very often on Atari's Autotune, but it is helpful to know that they are there in case you want to get very advanced with the controls that you're sending to your device. That's all for the advanced auto mode controls and also the keyboard controls on the bottom. I'll see you in the next one.